for your goodness. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning for your mercies and your loving kindness, Father. We give your name the praise this morning. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him with me. Worship him because he's good. Hallelujah. He's brought us all through the year. Hallelujah. He's kept us. Hallelujah. He's kept us in our right mind. He's given us a reasonable portion of health. We praise your name this morning, Father. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for bringing us, hallelujah, into 2023, hallelujah. Father, we're so grateful to you this morning. We are so grateful to you this morning. For great is your faithfulness, hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness, hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, hallelujah. We thank you, hallelujah. Our Father, hallelujah, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Father God, we give your name the praise. Hallelujah. Father, before we go any further, we ask that you forgive us, Father, for all of our sins, God. Anything we may have done in thought, in word, or in deed, we come to you this morning, Father, with a repentant heart. Hallelujah. And Father, we ask that you search us. Hallelujah. If there is any unforgiveness in us, God, bring it to our front so we can repent, God, so we can forgive, Father in the name of Jesus Father we come to you this morning Father we thank you hallelujah for our life God we thank you this morning for our health God we thank you this morning Father we don't want to take anything for granted so we worship you hallelujah we worship you hallelujah we thank you Father for being saved God we thank you for the Holy Ghost Father we thank you for dying for us Father we thank you God hallelujah we thank you for healing God in the name of Jesus father we don't come asking hallelujah we don't come begging hallelujah but we simply want to say thank you this morning hallelujah because you've been good hallelujah we simply want to say thank you hallelujah father God we ask that you continue to touch our pastor God touch him father from the crown of his head father to the sole of his feet father in the name of Jesus anoint him fresh father in the name of Jesus strengthen him father in the name of Jesus have your way father cover him with your blood father in the name of Jesus and our first lady God touch as only you can God strengthen her as only you can father keep her as only you can father bless her father in the name of Jesus strengthen her father in the name of Jesus Father God, pour into our leaders, God, everything they've given out to us and more, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, remember first fruits, hallelujah. Touch each and every last one of us, God, in the name of Jesus. Every household represented here today, every family represented here today, do, Father, what only you know how to do, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, hallelujah, for bringing us through the year of the pivot, hallelujah, into a year of commitment, Father. We have a new commitment, a new desire, God, in the name of Jesus, and we commit ourselves to you, hallelujah. We commit our will to you, hallelujah, not our will, God, but let your will be done, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, bless our service, God. In the name of Jesus, don't let none leave here the way they came in, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, remember the praise team. Remember the musicians, Father. Anoint them, Father. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the sound people, God. Anoint them in the name of Jesus. The greeters, God, anoint them, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we praise you, God. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. 
We praise your name, hallelujah. Have your way this morning, God. Have your way this morning, God. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we worship you, hallelujah. Every listener, God, go into every home, God. Do what only you know how to do, God. Touch them, God. Bless them, God. Heal them, Father. Deliver them, Father. Save them, Father. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, God, remember every backslider this morning, Father. Bring them back, Father. In the name of Jesus. Bring them back, Father. In the name of Jesus. Save this morning, God. Fill somebody with the Holy Ghost this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we yield this service to you. We yield this service to you, Father. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. In the name of Jesus. Every sick, God, remember them, God. In the name of Jesus. Regulate minds this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We bind the hand of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. We come against drugs. We come against alcohol. We come against marijuana. We come against vaping. Father, deliver God. In the name of Jesus. We know you're able. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And we trust you this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we ask that you will continue to have your way as we yield this service to you, Father. Do what only you know how to do, God. In the name of Jesus. As the praise teams come, hallelujah. Stay in the worship, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, the presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your name. Lord, we praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for meeting us here, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Do we have any thankful folks in here? Are you grateful? I said, are you grateful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We made it. I said, we made it. I said, we made it. We made it through. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't know like I know. But I don't know like you know. But one thing I do know, we made it. Hallelujah. We made it to 2023. Hallelujah. Trials, tribulations. Some things came up last year. Hallelujah. That we didn't even expect. Hallelujah. Isn't that right, Dr. Deweese? We didn't even expect some things to come up last year. But God was right there with us. Hallelujah. So he deserves the praise. I said he deserves the glory. I said he deserves the honor. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but praise is my weapon. Hallelujah. When things started happening, I began to give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have time to praise him this morning? hallelujah 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 God you are great hallelujah he's a great God yes he is and he's a good God somebody said God is good and all the time yes he is come on put those hands together come on clap them like you're crazy for the Lord 
Make some noise in here. Come on, praise team. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, the goodness of the Lord. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, let's make this one big choir. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every generation. People from every nation and all. Hey. From generation to generation. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. For what? For who you are. Hey. We worship you. We worship you. Show some shine. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah. My God is good. Yes, He is. Now let's do that again. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. When I think about what you've done for Lord, me, you are good and your mercy think about how you brought forever. me, Jesus. Think about everything that you're Lord, doing you in people's lives today. We honor forever. you. We worship you. Yes, we do. Lord, you are good and your mercy yeah. forever. People from every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From generation. From generation hey, we, we worship you. you. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. You Lord of Lords, you King of Kings. Yes, you are. Give your highest praise. We worship who you are. You are good. Hey, Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. I said my God, God is good. good. Yes, he good. is. You are good. When I think about all how he's brought me, think about how he's healed you my body. Are you are good. You are good. All the time. And all the time. You are good. You are good. You are good. All the time. And all the time. Come on, no music. Good. You are God. You are good. good you are good all the time and all the time now everybody joining you are good you are good all the time and all the time yeah yeah yes he is oh yes he is oh yes he is people from every nation hey We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you. For who you are. We worship you. That's what we came here to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
know him. Praise him like you know him. Yeah. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. All the time. And all the time. You are good. You are good. All the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. All the time. And all the time. You are good. People from every nation. People from every nation. And all from generation. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. This new year that the Lord yes. has blessed us with, because some of us, my friend did not make it. She lost her life on yesterday. Wow. So I, I really thank God for allowing us to see this day. Don't you take your life for granted. Amen. Don't you take your family's life for granted. Bless your name, Lord.
the morning It gently rests upon your heart Like the dew in the morning It gently rests upon your heart Stand on your feet and give Jesus some praise. This is our first Sunday of the first month of the new year. So we can we can actually say this is first fruits. This Sunday is the first fruits to the rest of the year. So the way you praise him today will bless the rest of your year. The way you worship him today, hallelujah, will bless the rest of your year. Y'all ain't talking back to nobody. The way you praise him, the way you serve him, the way you give, the way you commit today will determine how blessed the rest of your year shall be. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, you look blessed. Happy New Year. You may be seated on this Vision Sunday. Yeah, this Vision Sunday is an important Sunday here at First Fruits Community Church. Uh, this is where we take the opportunity to communicate uh, into your hearing and not just vocalize, but let you know uh, exactly what this uh, whole year is going to be all about. If somebody could grab my pad for me, too. Yep. Thank you so much. That's all right. Appreciate that. Hey, Amen. Can we praise God for our leaders of this house, our elders, our ministers, our deacons, our, our, our Sunday school teachers, our, 
our music department, amen. You go down the list, the line, the hospitality group, we praise God for them. We also want to just say thank God for our first lady this morning. Praise God. We love you. We love you. We love you. Everybody shout, be encouraged. Amen. Amen. She feels that strength from you, and we appreciate that. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Uh, just a couple things we're going to go through here. Uh, a few, few announcements, amen, that I want to uh, put into your hearing this morning. Uh, first of all, did anybody come to Sunday school this morning? Raise your hand if you were here. Oh, man, look, at y'all showed up in numbers today. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Something was a little bit different this morning. All the adult class moving forward will be right here in the main sanctuary throughout the rest of 2023. Uh, what we are doing, the why behind that is that we are... Um, splitting our classes and growing our Sunday schools. So Sister Pearl's class, actually, she has two age groups. <laughs> she has two age groups in one classroom. So, so what we're getting ready to do is we're about to add another teacher to the Sunday school uh, roster, and that teacher is going to take uh, one of those classes out of Pearl's class, and then she'll have her people, and they'll have their people, and then we'll have another room over there and an extra space over here. And we're even going to take this room right here that's a prayer room and utilize that in the mornings for an additional Sunday school class. So, so we're going to have classes for every single age group, all right? So that means all you got to do is show up, amen? Show up ready to learn, ready to be discipled, amen? And, this, and I tell you, this, the, the word that we're getting through Sunday school is powerful, amen? And it grows us. And we appreciate uh, all of you that are dedicated uh, in, to, to Sunday school and your growth in Jesus' name. A couple other announcements is on... Uh, January the 13th, that's a Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Where are my men at? There we go. That's how you start this new year. At 6.30 p.m. that Friday night, we're going to the Stingrays game. It's a hockey, the hockey group, amen. The brothers are going to get together. And so, so uh, Minister Hicks had to work this morning, uh, but he, he said, hey, I'm committed. I'm here, even though I'm working. But uh, what we want from the brothers is just a head count so we know how many people are going, how many tickets we need to get uh, so we can go enjoy some hockey in Jesus' name. Look like A.J. Rowland. For, yeah, so it doesn't matter what age, but you just you have to be a brother. So ladies, I love you, but they got something else they'll plan for you. We got what's going on for us in Jesus' name. Also, um, all of the young people in the house shout with a loud voice. I saw some adults shouting louder than some of the young people. <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to have to, Brother SJ, I think I'm going to have to make this a little bit clearer for them. Because while we are young at heart, we're, we're calling on age group 13 to 21, 22 maybe, to come out on Saturday. Uh, the I think that's the... 14th of January from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. for game night, all right? So, yeah, so, so all the teens and young adults are getting together next door for a game night. And, uh, and um, you know, if some of them adults try to sneak in, we'll, we'll, we'll put some bodyguards on the door to try to keep them out. You know what I'm saying? Come up, come up here, SJ. This, this is our youth leader. Can we praise God for Brother, uh, Brother Tucker Jr.? Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, had, I had to put that cap on him. I knew that was going to happen, man. So, Age 13 to 21, young people. All right. Fill the house, man, and come out on, on Saturday the 14th at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. in Jesus' name. <laughs> I think, honestly, that's all the major announcements outside of our normal announcements. Now, now in this 2023, we're still going to keep fasting, amen, which means on Wednesdays will still be our official fast day. So, from 6 in the morning, like the do in the morning, amen, at 6 a.m. until 6 p.m., we're going with no food, no water, no nothing. Now, if you have to take medicine and all that, you know, you, you got to govern yourself accordingly to that. Um, and, but, in, but outside of that, you know, do what you can. But those that can, go ahead and fast and, and, and let's fast and pray and then meet out here at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday for prayer, amen. Just like you pack in the house now, go ahead and let your boss know, listen, listen, my, my, the, my boss of bosses said I need to be out here on Wednesday nights, amen? And, uh, and I just believe you got so much favor on your life. Your Wednesdays are going to open up big time. And Wednesdays been been pretty packed too, man. So we've been having a great time on Wednesdays. And uh, what's, what's even greater this year is I do a lot of teachings. Most of the teachings, unless I'm out of town, 
But even while I'm in town, we, we already put our ministers and elders on schedules to rotate. So they're, they're going to have some Wednesday nights. They're going to be out here teaching as well. Amen. Uh, so is anybody, anybody excited about that to get, get other people's gifts operating even more in the house? So I want you to get out here this Wednesday in Jesus' name, 6.30 for prayer, 7 p.m. Wednesday night recharge. Listen, it is offering time, y'all. Our first offering of 2023. Outside of last night when we crossed over, some of y'all gave and stuff. But I want everybody to stand on your feet. Everybody in here pretty much knows what it looks like to give in this house, just in case you don't. Uh, there should be some envelopes in front of you, or you can text FFCC to the number on the screen. Maybe you gave your tithes last night. Maybe you're just going to give your tithes again. I don't know. Maybe guys are saying, you know what, I'm going to maybe, maybe pressing on your heart to give your tithes double on, on, on the first Sunday of this year. Uh, or, or maybe you just set aside an offering. Whatever it is, your tithes and your offerings matter. Amen. We're going places this year. We're doing great things. This is Vision Sunday. And I'm going to be spending some time communicating to you about what that looks like for us as we head into this new year as a church. And then, of course, as individually, what the year of commitment looks like. And so I want you to commit this year to giving even above and beyond what you did last year, all right? So, so maybe, maybe, you know, every individual knows what this looks like. Uh, I was spending time looking at some, so, some stuff uh, in the church to look at how consistent and committed we are to giving. And we are a giving church and, somebody say and, and we also have opportunity, just like everywhere else, to take it to that next level, amen? So you know where you fall in that. God expects our tithes and our offerings, amen? Uh, and when we give, we, how do we do it? We just do it cheerfully, all right? It's super easy to do that. So with your gift in your hand, in your heart, and in your mouth, Father, we thank you this morning for the seed sowers, Lord, that are pouring into this ministry uh, that which you have provided, hallelujah, provided them, Lord. I feel in my spirit, Lord, that this seed will take root and will bless the rest of this year, Lord. I believe, Lord, hallelujah, we believe collectively, Lord God, that with this seed, we rebuke devourers. With this seed, we rebuke the enemy, hallelujah, that has already strategized to fight our finances this year. We bind him with this offering. We bind him with our tithes. Hallelujah. We, be, we say by faith that it is well, Lord, that we will see an outpouring of blessings this year like we've never seen before. According to this seed, in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. You may be seated now. If you have a tangible seed in an envelope this morning. Then you know how that goes right after service. There will be a deacon. Deacon Jones will be standing at the door to receive those envelopes in Jesus' name. This is vision. Somebody look at somebody say, can you see? Amen. 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 It's amazing. Helen Keller saw more than some people that can't have their actual eyesight. Yeah, she, she couldn't see, speak, hear, nothing. But she saw. She wrote books. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, God wants us to see what he has for us. And what is this year? The year of what? Commitment. commitment. This is the year of commitment. 2023 is the year of commitment. And I'm excited to just kind of speak to you a little bit about what that looks like in this house. We're going to talk about our mission, our vision, our journey, our theme, our goals. Then I'm going to drop a couple scriptures in your heart. We're going to take communion. We're going to head home. Sound good? Look at somebody say, I ain't even tired. Why are you lying at church? Why are you lying? Ah, get, man, listen, you done messed up already, man. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just messing with you. I'm a little sleepy. Hey, baby, you looking good. I, I, I ain't going to lie. I'm a little tired, but my soul. I was telling him in the office, like, yeah, I ain't doing no heavy preaching. They said, I don't know, Pastor. Every time you say that, you know you always got them five closings. I, well, I commit to three closings only this year. Okay, three. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, so so we're, I'm going to pull up our mission on the, on the screen for you here. Our mission at our church, uh, at First Fruits Community Church, is to what? Make disciples of Jesus Christ. This is the mission of the body of Christ. Like, we will never, ever stray from this mission. This mission will never change because this is the mission that Jesus Christ came to do. When God sent his son into the world, it wasn't just that he would save souls, right? It's, it's so we could be saved. But his mission was to make people just like him. 
And so he did that when he walked down the seashores of Galilee. He called people out, and they followed him. They became his disciples. It wasn't a one-day uh, transformation. It was a process. It was a process of sitting uh, alongside the rabbi, Jesus, and learning his teachings and understanding who he was and, and what his lifestyle looked like and, and then replicating that and duplicating that as disciples Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we're called to do. And so on a larger scale, when you think about what you are here for, what we are here for, you are on mission. You're on mission, not just here. See, this is kind of like, you know, when you're in a war and, and all the soldiers and the generals, they gather together and they get their mission debrief or their mission briefing. This is what this Sundays are all about, mission briefings. You know, and then, and then we're just thankful because people come and visit us. We have guests that come in on Sunday mornings, and God pricks their heart with the gospel, and they get saved. But, but really, Sunday mornings is for the church, Amen. for us to get our mission briefing. So I don't want you, God doesn't want us to ever forget why we're here. We are here to do what? Make disciples of Jesus Christ. We're here to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And so when, so when we dive deeper into this, then specifically for First Fruits Community Church, we have a very specific vision here. Our vision is to become, which means we're working at this. We're gaining progress. We're, our, we're, we're tracking the right direction. But we want to become the center of fellowship and discipleship and ministry and evangelism, right? So, so when, I say, when we say we want to become the center uh, if you notice, the is capitalized, right? Yeah. I mean, I know it might be kind of hard to see back there, but the is capitalized, which means, you know, we, we got lots of churches doing a lot of great things in Somerville, in the low country, in our state, around the world. Uh, here at First Fruits, we want to be known as that church who really has fellowship down packed. They, we know what fellowship is about, and we do fellowship the way the Bible says to do it. So we're going to be known for that. We're going to become that center for fellowship, that same thing, that center for discipleship. Uh, we, we're not just going to have a church full of members, although at times we may refer to people as members. You're really disciples because it's all about learning and growing, becoming like him, right? So we'll be the center for discipleship. We'll also be the center for ministry. Now, that word is generally used a lot. It's, it's also used as a title upon people called ministers. But truth be told, if you're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, then you're a minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Because and, the word minister in the Greek just means to serve. And so we watch this. So we want to be known as the place that knows how to serve well. Yeah, yeah, we're, we, we, we are the center of ministry. We, we serve God, we serve one another, and we serve our community in, in different avenues and routes and ways to do that. So I want you to keep that in mind. And, 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 and this is probably, well, not, not probably, this is very well going to be one of our biggest focuses this year is the evangelism piece. We do a good job doing a little bit of Facebook sharing. Where's my Facebook evangelist? Raise your hands. You share the live stream. Anybody share this live stream this morning? Uh oh, okay, good. You can go ahead and pull your phones out right now in service. Go ahead and share the live stream. Go to First Fruits Community Church. Share that live stream right now because you can reach somebody. But that's really not evangelism. I'm just using that as a term to help us to reach some more people online. But what we're going to do is we're going to be known as the center for evangelism. So what we'll do is we'll train on how do you evangelize? How do you get out in the community? How do you reach these people? that God wants saved, that God wants to be uh, his disciples. It's, it's not up to Jesus to lead them here. Yep, I know. We market. We, you know how much churches spend on marketing flyers and ads? You know how much money they spend? Now, I'm not knocking that because it's important. Like, I think that's a good tool to use. But some, some places cop out and use that as their source of evangelism. You know, spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in marketing flyers and campaigns and all that, when God told us to go, for us to be the marketing flyers, for us to get out there and evangelize and take something called the good news to a dying world, a flyer isn't necessarily going to save anybody. You know, it might attract some people. I put out flyers for New, Year, New Year's Eve, and it reached thousands of people, but we didn't even have a packed house last night. 
right? So that's the point. So the idea is, is we want to become the center of evangelism, that all of you as ministers of the Lord know and learn this year what it looks like to evangelize. Yeah, yeah. That, I'm not saying you're going to go out there and preach some big sermon on the corner, you know, uh, on a step stool, you hollering and screaming, oh, repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. That might be some of you, and that's okay, too. But what you're going to do is you're going to find your niche. You're going to find the way God is leading you to evangelize. I'll teach you principles. I'll show you how to evangelize the biblical way, um, the effective way, so that what will happen, what you'll probably start noticing this year is that people will get saved before they even come to the church. Like, like I was down in Charleston years ago um, evangelizing and witnessing at the, at the, um, at the waterfront park and uh, this, this man was sitting there, and I was taking him through the biblical way of evangelism, and he wanted to be baptized in Jesus' name on the spot right there. Now, listen. listen. Okay? Y'all awake? I know you're awake. You're going to be real awake when I say this. <laughs> so what if you go out here and you biblically evangelize, and somebody's like, I want to be baptized right now. And you got like a, uh, like a fountain or a pool deep enough to do it, like right there. You're going to be like, oh, well, why don't you come to church Sunday? I'm literally assigning you to baptize. God's, God has given us that authority to do so. But you got to do it the right way, so that's what I'm going to teach you. You see, you know, I teach by example. We baptize in Jesus' name. So I'll show you how to do that. But you're going to have to get comfortable for that because who knows? God might be calling you to do that. Right? You, yeah, what, me? What, I saw that, what, me? Yeah, maybe you. It's usually the one that's thinking that the hardest. What, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not you, right? Why not us? Could you imagine a church of baptizers? Oh, right. they, I bet you that'll make the headlines. These people won't stop baptizing folk in fountains and pools and wherever. Because that's what I did. When that man was convicted, um, I, I, I said, I was like, look, man, there's nothing between you and that water right there. And it was during the summertime. There was a lot of tourists out there. And I saw some doubt spring up into his heart. And the Lord took me to the scriptures where, where, um, where Philip was ministering to the Ethiopian eunuch. And he said, what, like, what hinders you? What's between you and that water that, that, that I should forbid you to be baptized? The man got up and got baptized. The same thing happened with that man downtown. He came over to that pineapple. Y'all, 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 yeah, y'all know where that is in, in the waterfront park. And, and, and the funny thing, it had rained that afternoon, and then there was so much water in there. It was deep enough to sit in there and put, put him under water in Jesus' name. I did that in Jesus' name in front of everybody. When he came up, all those tourists, it was just like church in the park. Everybody just started praising God. Amen. So we will be known, we will become the center of fellowship, discipleship, ministry, and evangelism. Now, we have a journey that we're on. We have a journey that we're all on. And if you look up at the screen at the TVs, our journey is to love, grow, serve, and go. Say it with me. Love, grow, serve, go. That's our journey. Love God. And love who? Grow in what? Serve in what? Go share the good news. So as a church, we're on this journey, but this is also your individual journey. This will never end. You, 20 years from now, you may be in Kansas, who knows, but this will always be your journey to be in love with God, to love his people, to grow in spiritual maturity. If you think you've stopped growing, then that's a sign you need to grow, right? So we have to grow in spiritual maturity. We have to serve in ministry. These are commandments. These are things that Jesus expects of us that we commit to this year and that we should go share the good news. So this is our journey. And our theme this year is the year of what? Yeah, come on. Let's praise God for that. We came out of some pivots. We came out of some turmoil. We came out of some big moments, some little moments, some... So ups, downs, and in-betweens, and here we are in 2023, and this is the year, the Lord says, of commitment. So there's a couple things you have to do. You got to think about what does that mean, first, for me individually. 
I love your post, Dr. Deweese, this morning on Facebook. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. She, she was like, I've been meditating already on what it means, the year of commitment. And she talked about the committing to God and, 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 and looking at, like, my relationship with him and, and, and kind of doing a pulse check. And, and I'm committed to family and I'm committed to this and that. So she listed some things out for herself and to hopefully maybe encourage others to start really thinking about what this means for you individually. Because the year of commitment, I told the leadership team, they knew this before y'all found out last night. Uh, I, I, I said, what's going to happen is the year of commitment is going to hit the house as a whole, and then it'll hit us individually. So right now, I want you to think about the house as a whole and our theme as the year of commitment. We have some goals this year. Somebody shout goals. goals. All right. So our first goal you'll see on the screen is to increase the consistency of what? Fellowship. Among our members. Why? Because fellowship matters. Everybody say fellowship matters. So our goal is to increase the consistency of fellowship among our members. What this means is when you think about like love, love ministry, you think about Joshua's army, you think about uh, all the different opportunities that we create. I mean, for example, like the Stingrays thing and then, and then game night and things of that sort. We are going to be super intentional this year to increase the consistency of fellowship among our members. So what that means is, like, leaders, we'll be tracking. We're, we're not just gathering together and having some fun. Like, we're going to know who came to the Stingrays game. Because we want to see what members are in fellowship and what members aren't quite there yet. And then try to find ways to figure out the why behind that and overcome those challenges that the enemy has put there in place so we can break through that barrier. Because one thing you'll learn is the more you fellowship, the more strength you gain. Man, Brother Phil, remember during the pandemic? When we was back there sawing all of that wood to pieces and sanding it down, we had dust all up in our nostrils and everything, man. But it, that was fun. But what, what I enjoyed the most about that, and brother, a couple of other brothers were in there too, is that just the hanging out with each other. Like we gained strength from one another. You know, you know, a threefold cord is not easily broken. And sometimes we always relate that to marriage, but it also means to fellowship in the word, fellowship with the saints. We have to be super intentional and somebody shout committed, committed. this year to increase the consistency. There you go. Because if you're committed, you're consistent. Yeah. So we have to increase the consistency of fellowship among our members. Why? Because fellowship matters. Our next goal is that every, ooh, every member add a what? Member. Who in here is a member of First Fruits? Raise your hand. Real high, real high, real high, real high. Okay, so by this time next year, then we're going to double every hand raised in here. So I think I saw about at least 50 hands up. So that means we're going to, for every member of this church, by this time next year, you should be able to look across and see somebody that you were able to bring into this church, that they joined this church and became a member at First Fruits. Yeah. And guess what? I, I'm watching. Why? Because God's watching. Because God's taking that seriously. Yeah. So, so, so when you look across, you, you're going to see that one person. You might get super excited and be like, you know what? If, if pastor is saying our goal is to add at least one member, I, I'm going to try to exceed that goal. Right. So some of y'all might find a way to bring two in. But listen, by the end of this year, your goal is to bring one person to Christ. That they, that they come in here, they join this church, that they get saved, and you're going to track alongside them. Because and, and, what you're doing is you're making a disciple. Amen. Y'all catch that? Y'all writing this down? These are not my goals alone. These are our goals. Yeah, so I'm going to look out and find somebody new, too, that I brought here specifically. All right? Y'all ready? All right, our, our third goal is this. Every member serves on purpose. Not some members. Every member serves on purpose. Mm, can you feel the, the, the theme of our commitment up in here? Because serving ain't for the... Uh, ain't for the ain't for the people that aren't really committed this is where the rubber meets the road y'all this is what Jesus is looking at like who like like there was there was a rich young ruler in the scriptures 
that was having conversations with Jesus, he said, good master, how can I, how can I enter in, right? He's like, first of all, nobody's good but our Father in heaven. He's like, have you kept the commandments? Have you done this, done that? He's like, I've kept all the commandments. He said, go sell everything you have and then come and follow me. And the Bible says he turned away mad and walked away because he was holding on to something that stopped him from serving the Lord. Not just following Jesus, but from serving him. So God's going to require you to sacrifice this year because it is, it is up to all of us to serve. And so we're going to be spending time, me, myself, the leaders of this house, um, serving you and also helping you to find your place to serve here in this ministry, right? Now, we're smaller, so that might look like, hmm, not so many choices or opportunities, but trust me, we have plenty of opportunities for you to serve, all right? may not be the thing you, you're so super passionate about, but there's going to be some opportunities for you to get involved, whether it be our food bank, whether it be... Uh, whether it be the hospitality, whether it be on the praise team, the choir, everybody can join the choir. Even if you can't sing, you can stand next to somebody that can sing and learn how to sing. Ain't that right, Dr. Dewey? Right? We know it. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you will figure it out. We're going to help you figure it out. But our goal, one of our goals this year is that every member serves on purpose. And what that means is, see, if you do something with purpose, you're, you're, even if you're not passionate about it, you're doing it on purpose. And the purpose is to glorify God, to build up his church, his kingdom, while we are here. God puts you here for a reason. You're not just here just to be here. You're not just here to be another church member that warms a seat, comes in on a Sunday, leaves, and comes. No, 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 no. We break tradition here. We don't, we don't do that stuff here. We, we come to worship. We come to serve. We serve God. We serve one another. And we serve our community. And if you spend time meditating on that, trust me, you'll find a place to serve. Because you'll start asking questions like, okay, Lord, how can I serve my community? Maybe God leads you to do something. Come let me know so I'll know how we can support you, right? Maybe God's going to have you um, going to, there's, we have a men's house here. We, we have a children's home in Somerville. Maybe God puts on your heart to serve that children's home all 2023. That's the way you can serve the community. God's going to inspire you. God's going to put something in your heart so you'll know how to serve either your community or each other or just God himself, Right? Maybe in serving each other, maybe, maybe you might feel the unction to, to, to assign yourself to a couple specific people and just track alongside them this year to encourage them. Maybe you're going to serve as an encourager this year. But every member serves on purpose. Why? Because ministry matters. And then our last major goal is to reach our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because evangelism matters. I've been saying this for years, and I want to I want to try something real quick. Who in here lives in Sangaree, right behind the church? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. We got four people, and we probably got a couple more people that may not be. So four out of all of you are from this community right here, and yet our community directly behind our church. Like, if y'all really needed to, you, don't, you could walk to church if you wanted to, but you don't do that. Just drive <laughs> or catch a ride because this road crazy. I'm making a point. It's so close. Do you know my, how many homes we have in Sangaree? How many homes do you think we have? I think somebody probably have an idea. How many? Is it 1,000? It's more than 1,000. It's more than 1,000. It's about 3,000, 3,000 plus homes right here, right? I know you're going to say 3,000. I saw it in your eyes. Saw it in your <laughs> 3,000 plus homes, which means there's not one person living in every home. On average, there's four people in each one of those homes. You do the math, there's over seven to 10,000 people right behind. Seven to 10,000, that's very conservative. Y'all, right behind us. And we have not touched that community. We have not touched that community. We've influenced it. Some people know about us, but we have not touched that community. One of our evangelistic targets will be Sangaree this year. Hands down, if we don't do nothing else, we will infiltrate Sangaree. 
We're going to figure out what that looks like. We're going to form evangelistic teams. We're going to figure out what exactly that looks like. But we are going to impact Sangaree. Watch this. Listen, most people go out and try to do good things for a community that never lasts. The only thing that I know that really lasts is the gospel. If, y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't talking. The gospel transforms people, and that's how you transform a community. So in our evangelistic outreach, we will also serve the community. Go back one slide for me, please. Every member serves on purpose. So some way or another, we will serve that community with, their, with needs that, we, that God allows us to help to, to, to fulfill. Now go to the next slide. No, yeah, we will reach that community, however, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because that's what's going to impact. Saying, that's what's going to bring the violence down. That's what's going to bring the selling of the drugs down. We got a lot of drug selling right behind our church. We are not going to be a church that has a community next to us that stays in that condition. I'm sorry. I refuse moving forward to pastor a church that doesn't flip the statistics. People getting locked up left and right for selling drugs, being addicted to drugs. Do you know how much homelessness there is right, right over here? We're talking about the houses, but we have homeless camps. People who need to be served, both the gospel and whatever it is God wants us to bring to them to help them in their life. Sangaree, there's so much potential in Sangaree, so much potential. That's, somebody say, target number one for evangelism. Target number two is on the other side of Jordan. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Next in. Did you say next in? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you said last in. Sound like next in. <laughs> next in. Next in. Next in. Somebody shout next in. Next. Now over in next in, you know how many homes are being built? Woo. Too many. Thank you, Jesus. I know it's well above ten thousand when they're done with everything. Add four people to that. You talking about forty to fifty thousand people living over across the street, across seventeen over in next in. That's very conservative. People from all walks of life. Just like over in Sangaree, we will also do the same in Next Ten. Needs will be different over there. But one need that will never change is the need for the gospel. I don't care how much money you got, how much money you don't have. I don't care if you're selling drugs or you own drugs. Everybody was born in sin and everybody needs to be saved. And God does not want anybody to perish. And so we must, we must infiltrate next in this year as well so we're gonna the leaders are gonna get together we're gonna plan some things out and here's what I, I'm, I think you probably learned this about me as a leader as a pastor is I like to hear ideas from you as well because God works not just through me but he also works through the people so God might inspire you and put something in your heart to want to do I want you to feed that on up to me so that I know that when we sit down we can start planning some stuff and implement the things that God is leading us to implement. Everything we do should lead to Jesus. But in our evangelistic efforts, we have two targets this year. It's going to be Sangaree, and it's going to be Next In. And by this time next year, the Lord Terry, we should be able to see the impact that Jesus has had through us on both those communities. How are we going to see it? We're going to see people sitting in this congregation from those communities. We're going to see people getting saved from those communities. We're going to see people uh, starting to grow in their walk we're gonna, we're, from those communities. We're going to see life transform. We're going to see statistics change. And when I'm saying statistics, I'm going to have our team pull up the very specific statistics concerning both communities so that we can look at this time next year and say, have we impacted those numbers? We have a school right over here that we can minister to. There's so many opportunities, y'all, and this is the year of commitment. You see why this is the year of commitment? Because can, I can't do none of this by myself. I can't. Now, I can go out there and preach like a wild man because that's my, I'm an evangelist at heart. I don't know if y'all know that, but I can go out there. It's easy for me to evangelize. That's just my calling. I know it is, but I can't do this by myself. The Lord said, I got your, the people here. 
And so now call them higher to the year of commitment. Call them up to, to the expectation of consistency, reliability, dependability. God is looking on people that he can depend upon, that, that he can count on, that will be consistent, amen, with the assignment that he has given you. And so in saying that, I want to read to you Acts chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. When you have it, you can stand on your feet. And uh, we're going to read it on the screen, or you can pull it out in your Bibles or on your apps. The reason why I went to Acts chapter 2 is because we are following the biblical pattern of the early church by following our mission, our vision, our journey, and, and our theme and the goals that we've set for this house. All this is here, Acts chapter 2. I know y'all was probably coming for a shouting message, but this ain't that. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 says, Then they that gladly receive. Do you all see people who are saying, Gary, next thing, gladly receiving the word? Yeah, they that gladly received his word were baptized, y'all. We literally, deacons, brothers, ladies, we're going to have to break that baptismal pool down and take it to Sangaree and break it down and set it up in Nexton as well. We're going to do that. We're going to have some baptisms in the park. We're going to do all that stuff this year because people are going to gladly receive his word and they on the spot are going to want to be baptized. And I don't feel like getting in no ponds and we got a really nice a uh, baptismal pool that is portable. So we go, it's on, it's on. We're going to infiltrate. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and watch this, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. I don't know what we're going to do when that happens, <laughs> but we're going to pack them in. We might have to go to two services or something like that this year. We'll see as we grow. And verse 42 says, and they continued. Somebody shout, Continued. How did they continue? Steadfastly. That's commitment. That's commitment. Steadfastness. That's commitment. They did not give up. They did not quit. They didn't hold back. They stuck to it. I got a really, really nice visual I'm going to pop up next Sunday for you as we, as we continue to dig down into this year of commitment. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. In, in breaking of bread and in prayers. They were committed to these things. Verse 44 says, I'm, I'm sorry, verse 43 says, and fear came upon every soul. That means reverence for God yes, fell on everybody. We live in a, a, a world where people don't reverence God anymore. No. I mean, the church does, you know, some, but, but I'm talking about the world there used to be a time where people, like, I remember, like, people would be afraid to be in front of a church smoking. Because there was just a level of reverence for this is a holy place. Or slip up and don't cuss in front of a pastor. People cuss all the time in front of me now. And, and they'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get better, you know, but you, this is a lack of reverence. But when the gospel hits, y'all, and people are transformed, a reverence is going to come upon every soul. And not only that, y'all, but we're going to see many wonders and signs done by the apostles. They saw it. We're going to see it. Verse 44 says, in all, somebody shout all. All, all that believed were how? Yes. Were how? Yes. Were how? Yes. All? all? All that believed were together. Yes. One accord. Might have different ways of seeing things, but hallelujah, differences doesn't mean disunity. All that believed were together, unity and diversity. All that believed were together, all that believed were together and had all things common. Verse 45 says, and sold their possessions and goods. Don't be shocked if we start seeing some of this stuff happens. You can't go back to the true apostolic way and not see some of these things happen. Right. Right. Stories of people selling homes or stories of people uh, uh, taking, you know, I stacked up life saving. I had one intent, but God told me here, pour it into the forwarding of the ministry. Don't be shocked when God starts moving on people's hearts because transformation has hit their lives right. in such a significant way 
that they say, you know what? All I can do is just now give back to God. Some people are going to be able to do that with possessions. We're going to see that. Sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord, y'all. With one accord in the temple, which means here, and breaking bread from house to house, which means there. So y'all ain't going to just see each other on Sundays. Y'all already doing, some of y'all already doing this by, by just nature. Like some of y'all get together, fellowship at each other's homes. We're going to see more of that this year. We need more of that. Going, breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. All right? Having favor with all the people. Listen. This year of commitment is going gonna, is gonna to produce a favor on our lives, y'all. Amen, amen. Just because you're committed to God and to this house, get ready. You got favor that just hits you. You don't even, you don't even realize. But you're about to actualize this year. You go, oh, y'all, I'm telling you. You got a favor that's about to, hit your, about to hit your house, about to hit your walk, about to hit you on your job, about to hit you everywhere you go. There's going to be a favor that God is going to place on you. According to the level of your commitment, that is going to bless you in a way that you could never imagine. You're not committing for the favor. The favor is just going to be a result of your commitment. Favor will be a result of your commitment. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved, y'all. Daily, y'all. Know what I expect to hear? Phone calls, testimonies, text messages. I was out here in Kroger, Walmart. I was out shopping. I was out doing this, minister to somebody. They want to be baptized, Pastor. They want to be baptized today. There ain't no water around. Can I bring them to the church? Yeah, bring them right now. Adding to the church daily, Amen. daily, such as should be saved. That's how we change this world we live in. We don't know how much longer we got, but we got to act like we got forever when eternity is right at the brink. It's right here, but we got to act like we have the time to do this and be about our father's business this year. What I love about the scripture is that they went from house to house breaking bread, and that specifically don't just doesn't just speak of fellowship, but it also refers to the Passover, the Lord's Supper. And so, in front of you, you should have cups. Let's 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 move to communion because this is first Sunday. We are going to break bread together and remember our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. We're going to remember the suffering of our Lord. We're going to remember the death of our Savior. We're going to remember the resurrection of our Savior. We're going to remember his ascension this morning. We're going to remember what he did at the cross for us. We're going to remember. There's cups all over the house. Amen. The brothers are bringing the table out for the first family to come forward. We are going to partake in communion together. Thank you, sir. The night that Jesus was betrayed, the Bible talks to us about how they, 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 they were sitting at a table. Yeah, and this table is a table of fellowship. It was Jesus and the 12. Even one of them was the devil. Judas was right there. Yeah, because he, he prepares the table in front of, in, in the presence of your enemies. He anoints your head with oil. Your cup runs over. None of us are enemies to each other in this house. Just setting the tone that they were sitting at the Passover table. And with the unleavened bread of the Passover, amen, which this morning is represented by that wafer that you have, amen, everybody grab that bread. What Jesus did is he took that unleavened bread and he took it and he blessed God. And he thanked God. And then he commanded. He, 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 he looked at the disciples. He says, take and eat this. Which was normal. That's what they were going to do. But then he says, take and eat. This is my body. All of a sudden, everything changed. 
they were, they were doing this originally to remember how God delivered the Israelites out of slavery under Egyptian, um, under the Egyptian pharaohs. But now he says that bread, he's like, this is my body, which is broken for you. He says, so as you eat it, as you eat it, as we eat this bread this morning, he said, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, you show forth my death until I come again. So everybody, let's take this bread this morning, let's break it, and then let's eat it together in Jesus' name. And remember, remember, remember the cross. Remember, he was wounded. His body was broken. As they whipped him and tore his flesh to pieces, his, his virgin mother Mary could not even recognize him. But he was broken for us so he could fix our broken lives. And then at that same table, then they, take, they took the cup. And when he took that cup, he blessed it, gave thanks. He says, take it and drink this cup. But then he changes it. He, it, it, it and the atmosphere had already shifted. But he, he shifts it a little bit more. He says, this, because see, they were in the old, they were in the old covenant at that time their salvation came by believing and their belief in God was accounted unto them for righteousness and their belief in God was shown by their works but then he changes it and he's like I'm getting ready to establish a new covenant he says take and drink this this blood is the new covenant that I'm establishing and I'm just kind of giving you words so you can understand what Jesus was saying. He's saying, I'm, I'm fulfilling the old so that the new covenant can take place. I'm going to establish a new covenant, and this covenant is not only for the Israelites, it's for everyone. Everyone. It's with this blood that we have remission of our sins. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink this, Drink it in remembrance of me. So let's remember Jesus as we drink this cup together in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wounded for my transgressions. Bruised for my iniquities. Chastisement of my peace was upon him. With his stripes we were healed. Hallelujah. For without the, shedding of, without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sins. For the blood of bulls and goats and the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer did not fully satisfy the wrath of God against his people. But it is the blood of Jesus Christ this morning, saints of God, that he shed on Calvary. His body had to be broken so his blood could be spilled. His body had to be torn so the blood would come out his side. Hallelujah. And he was wounded for your transgressions. And he was bruised for your iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. And now, somebody shout now. And now he commands all men, all women, everywhere to repent of their sins and be born again. Different from the old covenant. Born again of the water. Born again of the Spirit, He commands us to repent and be born again. When Peter stood up on that Pentecost Sunday, 
And the, and the people are crying out, what must we do to be saved? His message did not change from the message of Jesus. Jesus, I mean, Peter and the disciples and the apostles standing next to him, Peter says, repent and be baptized. How many of you? Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? The remission of our sins. And what will happen? You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Baptism of water, baptism of spirit. This morning in communion, we remember the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that brings both Jew and Gentile into one body called the church. That brings both white and black into one body called the church. See, we're going to preach the gospel, and that's what's going to integrate our community. That's what's going to make our church look different from the others. It's when the gospel is really preached and lived in a committed lifestyle. That you don't have to try to break down racial barriers. The gospel does it itself. The Holy Spirit convicts people of sin and brings people together. Because when you're reconciled to God, you're reconciled to each other. This church will look different this time next year. It's beautiful now. It's going to get even better and even more beautiful as the souls daily are saved. Anybody believe that this morning? Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Let's give him glory for this Vision Sunday. This is the year of commitment. And I want to take an opportunity if there's anybody in here that want to be saved. Maybe you haven't been baptized yet in Jesus' name. And you want to repent. You want to be baptized into his name. Then the pool is warm and ready for you. We have changes of clothes for you. All you have to do is come up real quick right now. And we will baptize you, you this morning in Jesus' name. Will there be one? Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, y'all. Come on. Come on. Let's praise God. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Lord added to the church how daily. This is the Whoa. first day of the year. You See, sister, this is. You are. Hallelujah. You are. You are. You are. You are. Hallelujah. You are first fruits hallelujah. to the soul. That we needed at least oh, one person this morning oh, to confirm the word of the Lord. Oh, you, hallelujah. hallelujah. That you hallelujah. shall be the first fruits of them thank that you, come Jesus. this year. Lord, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Will there be anybody else? Oh, 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 she don't oh, have to be the only person today. We got time and yeah. space and change of clothes. But this daughter of the Lord is going to go down in Jesus' name. We love you, honey. Come give me a hug, and I'll have the ladies take you next door and change you and get you ready. Hallelujah. What a, what a wonderful way to do the new year, y'all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hey, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. With the evidence, hallelujah. Lord, we praise Speaking you. Speaking in tongues, hallelujah. As the Spirit gives the utterance, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. He is a God that confirms the gospel. He confirms the word with signs. Following. Oh. Hallelujah. If there is anybody in here that wants to make First Fruits Community Church your church home, right? Then you could come down real quickly and we're gonna and we're gonna welcome you into this fold as a new member of First Fruits Community Church. Will there be one? Will there be any? Lord, I'm available Amen. to you. And I want to take a portion of this time. If there's anybody that wants specific prayer right now, we're going to do this really, really quickly because it don't take long. I'm going to ask Elder Washington to stand here. Minister Snover to go get changed for baptism. And we're going to pray for y'all that come up. We're going to pray. So you choose who you want to pray. 
And then if I pray for somebody, then the next person in line can go to Ella Washington. All right? I pray for y'all, then y'all go to Ella Washington. Oh, we need the oil. We need the oil.